This is very exciting. It reminds me of the good old days when we would travel the entire country and do build a pond days. I'm Greg Whitstock, the pond guy. This is my channel, Team Aquascape, because we're building a water feature today out here in San Diego for an influencer that's had her own HGTV show. She's got her own Instagram account, Sarah Bendrick, and she has got an incredible property here at her parents' house. And we have invited certified Aquascape contractors from all over. They came from near and far when they heard we were building for Sarah. And we're about to build a beautiful Aquascape ecosystem for her mom and dad right in the front of her parents' house. And this is gonna be a great day. And I think that's the perfect introduction. Everybody, let's start the Aquascape way. This is Sarah Bendrick <laughs> of HGTV's Lawn and Order. <laughs> and what else? Why don't you give us a little introduction? Because we only met what? Well, we only met in person about three weeks ago. I right? know, which is crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, "Let's build a pond." I'm like, "Okay." So <laughs> my background is landscape architecture. I have my contractor's license, C27, and I design build out here in San Diego. I also dabble in media. I'm super pumped to have you guys here. So, so what kind of shows have you had on oh, HGTV? Shows. Yeah. So I did a show called Build It Like Bendrick. I did a show called uh, I Hate My Yard, and then also one called Lawn and Order that I co host Yes, I remember you from I Hate My Yard but I didn't really know you. And then Franco, all the way from Philly, over here, said, you gotta meet, you gotta meet Sarah. And I said, okay. And then you were up filming for Ace a couple weeks ago in yeah. Chicago. She came by, she stayed a night at Aqualand. I did. It was actually really cool. It was like an office that has a room. <laughs> yep. Yeah, sleeping rooms at the office. But the hot tub was amazing. So we're, we're definitely gonna put something in the front yard today for your mom and dad, right? Yes. But you're kind of open. But oh, yeah. I was thinking a pineless waterfall, but you said they really wanted fish. Yeah, well, I want it to be like an interactive active space for kids and like the neighborhood to yeah. walk by and really I love see. It. I'm not the pondless waterfall guy, I'm the pond guy. So <laughs> anytime I could do this. But what were you thinking? And then we'll figure out what we're actually gonna do. So I kind of want to keep this as open play space. And again, the theme is natural play for my nieces and nephews and whatever neighborhood kids. I want to do an adult entertaining area, which would be a patio space with flagstone dry set. I have this fire pit that I had custom made. It would sit in the middle of that fire pit. And then the water feature, well, first of all, I have these blocks made out of rocks. So there's these rock benches that I want to put here. Outside that of the seat. patio. Yeah, outside the patio. And then the water feature would start from this side, kind of swing in front of the flagstone patio and enter into this area over here, which would be the pond. Okay, so the pond's over here. All right. Mm -hmm. This is like the creek to the pond, right? And then I need a little bridge or something. Does that work? Well, anything could work. <laughs> anything could work, but you know, what we love to do is just kind of freeform things too. Okay. And could you put the kids' play area over here and make the pond go this way a little bit so that every time they're pulling in, the waterfalls is facing the... That's kind of my truck parking area and project area. Oh, you park there? All the time. Oh, so you actually park <laughs> on the mulch. Yeah. So you're not going to have any kids there when you're parking. Well, I know I don't park there a lot, but like, because I do a lot of projects, I like to have an open space. So these are the things that we need to understand. And so, that's like easy access. Okay, so you want to... I'm not a I could be convinced, but as of now, like I like parking there and washing <laughs> my car. And <laughs> well, the only thing that I was thinking is you need a sitting area. You got the sitting area up here. And I was thinking, oh, you can double the sitting area if you had it on the... Oh, by making this bigger. No, by make you people could sit on the actual driveway, you know, as uh, well with chairs and oh, stuff. Oh, I see. So that since the waterfalls is going away from the patio area, Got it'd be it. nice to have chairs around there. But I see. But I didn't know about the parking, you know. Yeah, I kind of like it. Okay, so we'll keep going this. <laughs> we'll keep going this direction. So let's do this. Let's first th step that we're going to do is let's actually just get a virgin area. So we're going to move this. We're going to move all this rock over to the driveway, and we're going to get a virgin area, and then we're going to use a garden hose. We're going to lay out the pond. Okay. And we're going to lay out the patio, and then we're going to start. Awesome. So the first thing we're going to do is just do demo. So this is an old-fashioned build a pond day. How many people have been to an aquascape build a pond day before? Yeah. Okay. All right, so how about we do this? Everybody that's been to an Aquascape Build a Pond Day, go to this side. Everybody that hasn't, go to this side. So we're gonna walk over here. <laughs> yep, that's okay. I have one more secret. There's a pile of rocks right here too. Okay, so we're gonna be we're <laughs> gonna be digging in a lot of rocks. Cliff, you're on this side. You've been to a hundred Build a Pond Days. So here's all the trainees today. Here's all the trainers today. Hey, <laughs> so do you remember the famous Stanford study about the guards versus the inmates? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna think that they're gonna direct first of moving, <laughs> moving the rocks here. So if you've been to uh, Oxy at Build a Pond Day, we're gonna be doing this Build a Pond together. If you're a newbie and haven't been to a Build a Pond Day before, you're over here. Look who shows up! And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by moving the rocks. <laughs> I 
to circulate the yard. So outside kinda, of the patio. Yeah, so I kind of want to keep this open. Ten feet from there, or yeah, five about, feet from there. Maybe I mean. a little closer. Okay, so five feet from here then. Yeah, give me five feet from there. Oh, I have a tape measure. I can. Yeah, that's fine. Look, we do this. Let it's me just, see how good you are, though. <laughs> that's that's, that's so actually gotta, right on. <laughs> imagine when you have size 12 shoes, it kind of works. <laughs> All right, here's my center. Okay. Okay. There we go. All you right. want to go with the Here we spring? go. Franco. <laughs> what about starting a waterfall almost where this dirt pile is coming this way, coming down with a stream and then coming into the pond right on the edge here. I feel like it would be behind everything. Behind what? Well, the bench, there's going to be seating here, so you're not going <laughs> to yeah. see that. Yeah. Well, I think we just spent 5.75 man hours trying to figure out that we're going to do whatever we're going to do. <laughs> Once again, we have about half the group that have been to an old-fashioned Aquascape build a pond day. We got about half that are new people coming from near and far for your build. But when Aquascape started doing this, it was because I was traveling the country teaching people how to build a pond in a day. This is gonna be a pond in a day, about the size that it is. Yeah. And even though we have 25 people here today, this would be a, normally a group of five or six. The one thing that we're gonna get different because we have so many people is we're gonna get the patio done as well, which will be great for your parents to have the kind of that, that reveal. Mm -hmm. But everywhere I went when I was doing my seminars, people would say, you can't do that here because of the digging conditions. I think these are gonna be hard digging conditions. Yeah. You can't do that here because they didn't have a process to build a water feature. Obviously, we had to figure out where the patio was gonna go first, <laughs> but once this is done, I built this pond a thousand times before. You know, some of these certified counters have built this 500 times before. It's the same process. It's 20 products and 20 steps. And that was what really turned Aquascape into an international company, being able to systematize the construction of a decorative water feature because it's the same process. It's a little bit more stone, a little bit digger. The dimensions change a little bit, but it's the same 20 product 20 step process to build water features just like it's a process to build a patio and when you do that you can replicate the results and you can spend your time on the creativity so how you're going to place the rocks how you're going to use the driftwood and things like that so this is a standardized process all of the guys who have been to a build a pond day and many even now who have a personal pond have done this before so this is another day at the office for us the only time we typically have challenges with the customers besides where the patio goes <laughs> is in the middle of construction when the people come out there and freak out with all of the stones and how are you going to use that stuff and everything else. Sure. So this is great. What time is it? Does anybody have the time? It's going to be 8.15 8 or something? 8.05. 8.05. So by the end of the day, might be the sunset, but by the end of the day, <laughs> we will have a beautiful transformed space and there will be nothing. There will be nothing that you could put in the front yard here that will be draw more attention and a curb appeal than a decorative water feature. And we know that your parents are gonna be out here. People won't sit for hours on end and watch their tulips grow, but they'll sit <laughs> for hours on end and feed their fish. And that was one of the things you said, I don't want a lot of maintenance, but my parents want fish. And so I said, we went from a pondless waterfall to a pond because they want to enjoy the hobby. And yeah. all of the neighbors are gonna be able to enjoy it too as, as a front yard water feature. Yeah. Sarah, start us off. Hot. So it's gonna be, I would say 16 feet wide, 11 feet deep with a deep stream coming in or a stream coming in.
them out, hard yeah. obtuse like this, and then stream it out like this and let our drop be over here. Nice. So that way it hides more of the vial falls. Reason why is because most of the time contractors, younger contractors, try to make that lip the very first drop off your waterfall. Okay. Your eye is always going to be attracted to the very top first, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to see plastic. So what right. we do is we take it, we, we hide it back a little bit, okay. and just kind of let it flow out the top, okay. and then travel oh, around a little okay. bit to its first drop. So where would you expect the first drop to go? Right over here. Right over here. Right over there. I so see. that way your eye Instead is not right attracted there. to that, it's attracted to that. And that's the height of the beginning of it. Yes. It seems low, but you guys keep telling me that's how uh, it goes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Because well, what you the have problem to is that we're gonna have a volcano if we don't. Right. right. And there's no and those room. Are we, right. And we we don't want volcanoes or or a line of rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, the pump is gonna take care of most Chris, of the audience oh, yeah. and, sure. and, and the sound. Oh. Most people think that you gotta go higher in order to get the sound. You don't. Okay. It's based off the pump and tuning of, of the water. And where they fall from. Yes. <laughs> exactly. From and what you also have to realize is is the ed that your grade is actually gonna be six inches above water. Line, somewhere in that range. My grade. Yeah, so the grade of the dirt. Okay. The water line is actually going to be six inches below grade. That's kind of what we shoot for. Really? And the reason why is because if you get torrential downpours, you don't want this thing filled to the brim and then it overflows, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. want to give yourself a level. Plus, you want to give yourself a kind of a buffer yeah. as far as what, you know, it's able to do and fluctuate and, and sure. all that kind of stuff, especially out here in the California heat. So we have a six inch drop minimum okay. going into the pump. Close enough. 